Welcome to episode 16 of Harmony and Friends, casual conversations about art and business. This is a live streamed art business podcast, but if you are joining us for the replay, feel free to skip ahead. You see the countdown timer here. We start the conversation about three minutes into the live stream. If you are here live, thank you for joining us today. It's so much more fun when there is tons of interaction and you get to post your questions, you get to know each other, and it really creates a sense of community. We are all in this together. So why don't we use this time wisely and start connecting with each other and with the topic of the day in the chat right now. There's two different options. You can either just let us know, hey, where are you joining? from, what kind of art business do you have, or especially if you have been here quite a few times before, then let us know what appeals to you about the topic today. What appeals to you about the idea of starting a YouTube channel and do you already have one? I'd love to know and let's get started with all of that in the comments and then we're going to start with a live conversation here in just about one minute. Talk to you soon. To Harmony and Friends. Today is episode 16 of this art business podcast. We're going to have another casual conversation about art and business today. And the topic of the day is YouTube. So very fitting to be discussing that on a live stream on YouTube. Thanks for joining us today. I'm going to start with the introduction of the artist here in just a second. But while we get that up, I also want to ask you if you're watching us live. Do you already have your own YouTube channel? And what is it? Feel free to tell us about it. What's the main type of content? And if you don't have one, is it in your plans? All righty, welcome everybody. Good to have Hi. you. <laughs> So I'm so glad to have you here today. It's so cool. I was saying that before we got started just a few minutes earlier. It's so interesting. I love this format because I get to actually speak to the artists that I watch on YouTube. So it's a pretty fun time. And I think it'll be interesting too for everyone watching because, you know, you watch everyone's channel individually and then all of a sudden here we are together on the screen. So a different take. And we want to give you that behind the scenes look as to what it took to really build each of our YouTube channels. So with that, let's have two minutes of introductions. Feel free to just tell us a little bit about you as an art business or as an artist, anything you want those watching to know if they haven't met you yet before. Jen, we'll start with you. Hi, everyone. I'm Jen. I'm a Latina designer, illustrator, and educator, as well as a mama to three beautiful children. I was born and raised on the west side of Chicago in a community called Humboldt Park. I grew up in 
poverty with a single mother and a lot of those hardships and experiences in my youth um, are what I truly believe guides me as an adult. And I believe that whatever I put my passion and energy into helps me to create my future. So I run an indie creative studio based out of the Midwest. I'm right outside of Chicago and it's called Bella Sophia Creative. And with that, I focus on graphic design, surface pattern design, and illustration-focused clients. I also teach my own online courses on platforms like Skillshare, um, Udemy, and recently I launched on Gumroad. And I run a YouTube channel called The Creative Studio. So my educational background is in fashion marketing and management with a concentration in digital media and graphic design. And I have a background working in corporate PR, creative marketing and design, specifically within like the fashion and beauty industry. And I also taught as a professor in higher education for 11 years. I ran a digital magazine for about six, which will be interesting when you look at my old videos on YouTube. And I've been freelancing since I was about 20 years old in the graphics and interactive media within like the fashion and beauty space. And I have a huge passion for nonprofit work. I'm an activist and an organizer with an organization called the Debt Collective. You may have heard of us. We're the ones fighting to cancel student debt and I've assisted in projects dealing with things like charitable marketing, graphic design, strategizing, executing things like social media endeavors, and basically just helping organizations that are nonprofits develop their design and brand identities. Wow, you have such a varied and impressive background and wow, I yeah. love that you can juggle all of that. <laughs> Thank you so much for introducing yourself and being here today. Elizabeth, let's go with you. Phew, after that, Jen, come on. <laughs> Uh, so I uh, have less, <laughs> less, less of a backstory, maybe. Um, so I am a surface pattern designer. I've been a professional surface pattern designer for 20 years, basically my whole career. Um, I studied surface pattern design in college. And if you don't know what surface pattern design is, it's basically art for products. It's creating, whether it is a repeating pattern or a single illustration, it's creating art for commercial products like notebooks, fabrics, wallpapers, um, you know, apparel. There's all types of products that have art on it. We love to see, see that stuff. And that is what I do professionally. So I've, I worked for 10 years in-house designing for home textiles and apparel in New York City. And then at this point now, it's been uh, 11 years that I switched over to freelance work because I wanted to leave New York City and I wanted to buy a house and start a family and all that stuff. So I moved down to Raleigh, North Carolina, and I've been here for now 10 years, 11 years, and I've been freelancing ever since. And so um, with that has been doing my own art business. I thought freelancing was just like a, oh, just pick up a couple clients and it'd be easy. But really it has meant, you know, developing a full business um, along with freelancing. I licensed my artwork and uh, in 2020, I launched a really big uh, course. And at the same time, I, I had previously taught other surface design courses and surface design business courses. But in 2020, I launched a really big one. And along with that, I launched, um, you know, my blog and my YouTube channel and just started building from there on educating about surface design and the industry um, of art for product and creative business. So that is where I am now. That's a very, very cool story. I'm assuming that behind you there, that's one of your designs. Yes, this is. these are my licensed uh, fabrics. Um, you can't see all of them. Uh, well, and I have boxes and boxes of them. But yes, I have. Uh, I license with a fabric partner and I have about 15 collections of quilting fabric uh, to my name at this point uh, and more coming out. And I don't sew. So the samples are really piling up. <laughs> But that's, you know. incredible. that's such a great story. I, I think it really is a great reminder that you need to have, you know, built multiple legs to stand on if you want an art business. So today we're going to discuss YouTube, which could be one of them. Um, but probably uh, as the conversation might show and from your stories, you know, it might not be like the only thing. Just build a YouTube channel and you're golden. Yeah. Um, but it's really interesting to hear. And I love that you teach about surface pattern design because I think it is such an interesting area too. like 
for the longest time, I think until I was like in my mid thirties, it never occurred to me that like there was an actual human um, that was before AI, you know, like designing these things when you go to Target or TJ Maxx or like someone did that, you know, someone know. got Everyone out. has that light bulb moment. And it's, yeah, and it's most cool. of the, for most artists I know when they have that moment, they're like, wait a second, I want to do that. Right. So, <laughs> there's a lot of, a lot of, you know, want to be, you know, surface would be surface designers uh, right. who come from other art disciplines. So I love yeah. that. Very cool. Thanks for sharing your story. Allison, welcome. Share a little about yourself. Hey, so I'm Allison Lyon. And ever since I was a little girl, I've I've loved nature and art. Um, so combining those two together, I believe is my purpose in this life. And let's see. Well, I, I studied art in college for a few years. And then I uh, transferred and changed my art major into something more practical. And that's what I graduated with, hospitality and food management. Um, I graduated like in uh, 2014, I think. <laughs> um, and but I, I'm not using it, obviously. But um, And then I, I took years off of painting. And then um, in the summer of 2017, I picked up my paints again, and I just couldn't stop. Um, so I started my art business then. And uh, I started my YouTube channel in the spring of 2018. And um, a few years later, I got into watercolor and that is kind of what I became known for on YouTube is watercolor. And I started to make watercolor classes. I made a watercolor membership. Um, and then fast forward to today, I am focusing on my growing family and uh, mixed media art. I've kind of moved away from watercolor a little bit. And now I do mixed media. Um, and I also sell online classes. Um, and yeah, so. <laughs> That's very cool. I'm interested to hear later. Try to remind me because uh, it's not a topic that we prepped. But since you have changed your style or focus a little bit, I'm super interested to hear how that affected your channel. Um, really interesting. So let's do a quick, almost like a bullet list really quickly. Um, have each of you answer. Allison, we'll start back with you. Uh, what income streams do you have from your art? Wait, you're starting with me? Yes. That's what you said? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Obviously, YouTube. I, I make money through ad revenue on YouTube, and I'm part of the Amazon affiliate program. So that's another income stream. And I sell my artwork. So that's another one. Um, and then my online classes that I make, I have a teachable alisonlineart.teachable.com and that's where I host my my classes that I make so I make money through those I've done a sponsorship on YouTube before um, but only just one but I think in the future I would like to have that be um, another uh, consistent income stream I also have a spring shop spring is is what uh, teespring was I think um, but I don't really make much at all from that. Um, but yeah, so I have, you still have the membership? four main income okay. streams. Okay. Very cool. Sorry, do you still have a membership or you consider that part of the course? I, I recently um, ended the membership because okay. I decided to cut back on work because I'm expecting another baby. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, that, that was um, another income stream that I, I did have. Yeah. Thank you. Elizabeth, how about you? Um, I uh, do courses. Uh, is about a little over 60% of my income. Um, my art income is like this actual design work, which is partially freelance work and partially art licensing is a little under 40%. And then YouTube and affiliate stuff, I kind of just group all that together. And at this point, it's like 1% of my income. So <laughs> it's a very small chunk at this point. But yes, those are those are my, my main streams, courses, art licensing and freelance and a little bit of affiliate YouTube -y stuff in there. Cool. Thank you. 
Jen. Sure. So I have about five streams of income. Um, my largest, uh, which is 80%, are my online courses with Skillshare, Udemy, and Gumroad. 10% um, of my income comes from freelance work. That's my design and illustration clients. Um, and then I have um, online marketplaces, which are like digital products. So Etsy, Creative Market, I get about 4%. Affiliate marketing, I'm not uh, monetized on YouTube yet, um, but I still utilize affiliate marketing as a strategy with Amazon, creative market, design cuts. I'm kind of like, I use affiliate links when I do projects um, and I share those, that's 4%. And then I have print on demand. So Tea Public and Spoonflower, and that is about 2%. I love it. That was so precise. Thank you. I feel like you really went back and researched that. <laughs> that's cool. That's cool also to hear just how much, how much education was working for you, you know? So you, you, there must be really something about your courses uh, that they are so popular. That's very, very cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. We are going to jump a little more into the actual topic of YouTube for the day. Um, so my question is, I hope you all know about uh, when this happened. Feel free to jump in. I'm not going to go in a specific order now. Um, so when did you upload your first video to YouTube and how many videos are on your channel now and how many subscribers do you have? I'll jump in. Um, um, so, oh, <laughs> sorry. I was, I looked back and to see what some of my first videos were and um, I didn't start getting consistent with YouTube and like until I'd say summer of 2020, but some of my first videos were six, seven years ago, and they were um, holdovers from Periscope. If you guys remember, Periscope was like a brief a social media channel where you could basically like live stream. Um, it was sort of like be before YouTube, uh, IG Live and things like that. And so I would do like little tutorials on there. And then when Periscope was no more, I saved those videos and put them on YouTube. And I also had a couple older videos up of, you know, sort of advertising some of my courses and things like that. So just like these occasional videos about content that was relevant, but mostly I didn't start getting consistent until June, 2020. Um, and I have 128 videos now and about 8,300 subscribers. So. Thank you. Um, <laughs> I uploaded my first video February 2018, and it was like an, an oil painting tutorial. Um, and fast forward to today, I have 449 videos, although wow. some of them are unlisted. Um, so I, I made a lot of videos. Um, and then I have, as of a few days ago, I surpassed uh, 47,000 subscribers. Wow. Very Congrats. grateful for that. Awesome. Big <laughs> stuff. <laughs> Jen. Um, so right now, um, my oldest video is from nine years ago. And um, I had, back then, I was sharing content from the digital magazine that I ran. So like behind the scenes, photo shoots and things like that. Um, I have 235 videos, and right now I'm the smallest of all of us. I have 4,885 subscribers. So I'm not monetized yet, but I'm so close. They just got to finish those watch hours. You, you didn't count me, Jen, okay? Because here are my stats. You're not the smallest. <laughs> okay, so I started, like, my first video was July 2020 um lockdown kind of time right it's like if not if not now then when um so i started then i only have 73 videos right now which to me is like a crazy high amount but i realized in the land of youtube to actually get your channel moving that is not uh probably enough we could talk about that later um and i have 2500 subscribers which i am super excited about yeah, and that's a lot more to come. <laughs> all righty awesome <laughs> Um, I just think it's interesting to hear, too, if you think about it. And we're going to look at a few of the stats later, too. Um, just the time it takes, right? So some of our channels are bigger, some are smaller. But in general, it's been a few years and quite a few videos. You know, this is not, uh, we didn't have, like, some viral success within a week. Here's my 10,000 subscribers. So I think that's encouraging when you're in the thick of it, that, like, there is light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> but you kind of got to keep going. 
All righty. So for those of you who haven't seen your channels yet, tell us what kind of videos do you make on your YouTube channel? Do you have a focus like studio vlogs, instructional videos, technical stuff? And is that what you started with or has it been a journey to find the content type that you enjoy and that works for you? Whoever wants to go first. I can start. Um, so I do more instructional tutorial style videos. My background is obviously in teaching. So it's kind of what I was um, used to. So I focus on like graphic design software, specifically like the affinity software, because it's a great competition to Adobe, um, digital illustration, surface pattern design, using your iPad and procreate. Um, and then I throw in uh, creative, like creative business and freelance focus information based tutorials from time to time. It is not what I started with though. So when I first launched my YouTube channel like i said it was meant to be like a promotional creative tool to support the indie magazine that i was running with a few of my friends and a lot of the first videos you'll see on my channel are showcasing like the businesses that we showcased or the photo shoots um but what ended up happening is i shut down that magazine and i decided to kind of transition and pivot to focus on my freelance life like what i was working on and what i was doing um then i was vlogging and as much as I love to watch vlogs, absolutely love, I can have a vlog in the background. I watch, uh, I was watching your stuff, Allison, the other day. Um, <laughs> Elizabeth, I look to you for like inspiration for like creative stuff, um, but I love watching vlogs. But I found that vlogging, because um, I have kids, so it's hard to like, you know, daily document my life. Um, and I found that what people actually ended up coming to my channel for was the tutorials. And I transitioned two years ago to just focus on the tutorials. And then maybe if I was inspired once in a while, I'll do a vlog. But most of the time, because I can kind of like schedule it and be really strategic with when I film and what I do um, and when I release it, it just made sense for me. And that's what people ended up watching on my channel. And that's where I saw the most growth was the last two years because I was releasing these tutorials and that kind of helped to support like what I was doing with my courses anyways. Yeah. yeah um, I, I, um, what am I trying to say? I, I relate to that as well. So um, I, I guess first I'll just explain like the kind of videos that I um, started out with on YouTube. So I started with oil painting videos, like tutorials, um, and also vlogs. And I started with vlogs. And actually, I, I tell people who want to start a YouTube channel that starting with vlogs is not the best way to start because people don't know who you are. And vlogs, like it's really hard to show up on YouTube search for a vlog, um, you know, so it's really good to just start with like um, answering simple questions within your niche and and helping people. So um, it, like making videos that people are actually searching for. Um, so yeah, I started with oil painting videos and um, some vlogs, and then about gosh, I would say maybe a year later. A year later, I think, I, I got into watercolor. I started learning watercolor. And once I started making watercolor content, my channel took off. Um, I, I did like watercolor tutorials and um, like watercolor supply videos. And that just really helped my channel take off. Um, and oh, am I answering the question? <laughs> um, <laughs> How did you? Okay. And then today, um, I still make watercolor content once in a while, but um, I I make vlogs a lot because um, I just really enjoy them. And it's a great way that I, a great way for me to connect with my audience. Um, but I also uh, choose to do like videos that actually, uh, that get searched for on YouTube because my vlogs don't get as many views as like my tutorial videos. Um, so yeah, it's, it's best for me to also do tutorials because I can also share about like my classes, you know, and um, the supplies I use too. And that helps with affiliate sales and um, yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Um, I do a combination of 
Yeah, educational videos. I wouldn't say they're not exactly tutorials because I'm usually not like showing how I design stuff. Most of my classes aren't really based on teaching you how to actually design for surfaces. They're about the industry, the business, how to make your work more marketable, um, how to get your, your work out there and in front of art directors, all that kind of stuff. So I explore a lot of those type of educational topics of just the things we encounter running a creative business and how, you know, we need to get our art out there and, and sort of like marketing concerns and things like that. So I address a lot of those type of topics. And then the other thing that I do is interview other artists in the surface design and illustration industry. Um, and so usually those are like an hour long chat one on one. Um, and that started from I was doing some uh IG lives um, a while before. And then I was like, you know what? These can't really live that great. These aren't living very well on IG live. Um, and then of course, IG live, like I, it was like IG TV for a while, you know how they change everything. So I was like, you know what? I'm doing these on YouTube because they're, it's much better place to live. So um, now I get to interview artists and basically ask all the nosy questions that I have about their careers. Um, <laughs> and, and so those are good chats as well. So those are the two types of content that I have on my, my channel. Very cool. Um, I think I have some similar kind of stories as some of the ones that you shared. I started, I think it was just like, I was just trying to even just like sell my art. So I was just like a time lapse or like, you know, this is me uh, kind of thing. And then I was trying to do studio vlogs. And again, like at the time, I would have loved to have a channel where that takes off and like, that's my life. And I get to, you know, just share like my life as an artist. Um, but they have the lowest views of like everything on my channel channel i experienced the same thing like i couldn't i don't some of it i think is yes it's really hard um to get traction and be found and all that and again who are you even and then the second part is um i think it has to be so visually interesting so a lot of things i see is like people that have like their own huge like studio with you know cool equipment and all this product and like like i have this this is my big you know i have like a wall from ikea that i shove around um so it's not like something that's like so cool to look at right and not something that's super aspirational so i think that's one of the things something else that i think is editing like it's a whole nother skill set and I don't have the time, honestly, to invest in making them like so cool and building that separate skill set. Um, so they just kind of flop. And honestly, I do one like maybe every six months now just for the people that did follow me for that and, and like to stay up to date. But it's not really worth it in that sense from a business perspective for me. Mm -hmm. And I also have, you know, a kid and a job and everything. So it's like you have to decide what you invest your time in unless you just want it to be a hobby. Um, and then I tried the watercolor thing. I would have loved to do that. It definitely did not take off for my channel. I might, you know, continue to try because that's something that I can easily like film within an afternoon, like, you know, edit on my own and stuff, which is different than again, having to take, you know, little videos every day and do editing for every 30 seconds. And like, so that also made sense for my life, but it didn't work for me. And then I started doing these um, live streams and I'm not saying it's through the roof, but it's definitely something that appeals to people a lot more. I think it also helps obviously because the artists are sharing. Um, so it's a lot of that like cross pollination because we have similar um, audience in that sense, right? It's not necessarily one-to-one, -one, but a lot of artists are watching all of our channels. Um, so that has helped a lot. And honestly, one of the main reasons I did it, one, I just really wanted to meet all of you. Like, I think I was like, oh, I want to talk to that person, you know, we can be friends. We don't have to be friends, but just having that conversation. Oh, we're going to be friends. You oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, again, like, I noticed a lot of the videos I wanted to make, I would put on a list and be like, for the future, for the future, for the future, because you know what? I hadn't achieved those things, you know? So I can tell you about this and this. I knew people wanted to know how to do it. And I'm like, once I've done this, you know, once I've reached my six figures, once I've done this, it's going to be a great video. But what I'm going to do in between. <laughs> you know what? I can talk to people who have done it. Um, so that's, that's cool. And the last part is I really recommend live streaming if, again, like you have other things that are demanding your time because 
that's what I love about this is I'm being able to be consistent because I need to prep and I can do that at midnight if I need to, you know, when the house is quiet. And then it's just like an hour and a half of a live stream and then it's mm -hmm. done and it's not days and weeks of editing. So highly recommend. <laughs> yeah, anyway. I, I do want to say something about live streams. Yeah. I, um, in 2020, you know, when things were crazy, um, I started to go live, I think, yeah, it was like once a week for, I, I went live for almost a year, once a week doing like a watercolor tutorial. And that like really helped my channel grow. Um, wow. And also it, it helped me to really build a, um, a, a very close community of, mm -hmm. of artists. And, and we all just like kind of became friends and it was um, just so fun. And so going live has many benefits. And of course you don't have to edit it, edit the video. You just have to like prep beforehand. Um, so yeah, going live is great. <laughs> Yeah. Love that. I love I love that that worked for you as well and I agree like the community I love seeing new names pop up the seeing the same names you know every few weeks and then you connect on Instagram and mm -hmm. other places so it really is um, a much more interactive way than if you just post a video and someone watches it you know years later so okay next question are there any strategies you use to create a successful video find your topics, make the algorithm smile upon you, <laughs> or in other ways, encourage growth on your channel? Um, well, <laughs> I'll, I'll say I don't have a lot of strategies. <laughs> I'm not, I feel like I was not, I didn't really, I, I still don't really think of myself hardly as like a YouTuber, you know, like this isn't, it's, it's sort of a secondary thing that like it's, a part of my business, but it's, it's sort of in service of my courses, basically. Um, it's getting my name out there. It's getting my, inf the information that I have out there. And so, you know, every, uh, like every video that I do, I also have a blog come out at the same time. Um, so for like SEO purposes, basically. Um, but as far, so I would say I'm not great at like, making the YouTube uh, algorithm a smile at me, as you say, <laughs> um, but trying to sort of repurpose the content into, um, yeah, into a blog and my SEO for my category is really very strong. And I think part of that is, I mean, that's part of the reason that I chose to do YouTube versus like a podcast or some of the other formats that people might um, offer their content is because, you know, it is so closely tied to Google and to SEO and then putting that blog post um, to go along with it that sort of summarizes what's happening in the video and has some additional links and things like that. Um, you know, that has definitely helped to uh, strengthen my, like, I guess, position in Google search, search wise. Um, so that has been um, a big, I think, a, a big help. And then I also, like you said about the live streams, doing the interviews was partially me being nosy about other people's businesses, but partially it was the idea of, yeah, cross promotion. Like they're hopefully going to promote it to their audience as well. And it's not like I'm um, interviewing like huge artists that have like, you know, a hundred million followers or anything like that. But either way, it's, you know, if, if five people from their audience come to watch an interview about them, and that's five more people who hopefully get to know me and are interested in other right interviews that I might have done or other tutorials that I might do or whatever it is. So, so that like idea of cross promotion and, and the SEO are two sort of things uh, that I have leveraged with my, with my channel and my business. So. That makes sense. So you're maybe not strategic in the exact video topics, but that does sound pretty strategic, pretty smart. Yeah. 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 <laughs> totally. I love that. <laughs> Anyone else? Um, I guess I, I can go. So um, for su successful videos, what I found is um, it's always best to research your video first, like a video that you're thinking about making to research about it to see if people are, people actually want it. Um, so 
How I do that is I use what is called VidIQ. You can also use TubeBuddy. Um, it's, it's basically like an SEO tool for YouTube. So I, I use that to research keywords and topics for videos to see if they'll be successful, um, to see if people actually like search for those things on YouTube or even Google. Um, and other uh, tools that you could use to research is like Google Keyword Planner. You can research keywords on there. Um, there's also a website called answerthepublic.com and you can come up with like so many video ideas and topics um, through that website. And so I think researching first, to, like before you even make the video is super important. So you don't like waste your time on it. Um, and then what also like really helps my videos is using what is called like a headline analyzer. So I use co-schedule headline analyzer. Um, that helps me create titles for my YouTube videos um, that will uh, that, that are like successful titles. Um, so I use that for my YouTube videos and my email, um, my email headlines. Subject for, lines, yeah. Subject yes. lines, yeah. Um, it, I also, um, like, the, it, it would be great to use that for like blog post headlines too um, and sales pages. So I feel like that really helps. And then um, also the thumbnail is really important. I have found that if I like have my face on my thumbnail, <laughs> it gets like more click through rate. I guess a better click through rate than if I don't have my face on my thumbnail. So I, I do try and put my face on my thumbnails when I can. Um, and um, and also, yeah, just having a, a really good thumbnail is super important and a really good headline or YouTube title is very important. Um, and I took I took some notes here. Let me see. Did I touch everything? Oh, um, also, like, let's say you have a, a video that is taking off. It is good to make a video, another video that kind of goes off of that video mm -hmm. that is similar. Mm -hmm. That is uh, just like a, a tip for you um, that I found really works for my videos. So. You blew my mind with that headline tool because I, a lot of the other tools you've mentioned, like I've heard, maybe I've tried, they worked or didn't work for me, but that I've never heard of. And that is my biggest struggle is having a clickable headline. Like I hate the super clickbaity ones. And then everything else I come up with is just like some giant run on sentence that like is not compelling. So I'm going to go check that out. I just, wow, I learned something right here. Yeah, Thank you. I, yeah, I, I use that all the time. Yeah, all the time. It's cool. yeah. You guys, you guys should definitely check it out. Co-schedule headline analyzer. Very cool. Taking gonna... notes over oh. here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I like I have to put this back. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm gonna jump in just to say, like, I. I do kind of similar, but like at this point I've given up because with my interviews, I just do like, okay, here's all the things that I know are related to income streams that I know are interesting to artists just from being in different courses or on Instagram or like what I see people kind of struggle with or aspire to. So I no longer honestly do a ton of research. Um, and I'm just hoping that it kind of grows organically based on the good watch time, based on, you know, like it, it's actually they're performing well. So I've kind of let go of that. But um, the best performing content on my channel still historically is all the search related stuff. So just like you said, I mean, YouTube is like the second largest search engine after Google. And so people are looking for like Cora Harmony's vlog, like nobody, nobody's out there looking for that, but they are looking for actual how to so-and-so, how to so-and-so. Um, so that is what really works well from my channel. And I still do them now and then. I don't do them super much because one, I don't feel like I have that much like, in my workflow or knowledge to share. And I don't really want to go into it deeper just to create videos. Like I don't want it to be my specialty um, to do this kind of like technical teaching. It's just not like I work in software 
outside of, you know, art. So I'm like, I'm, I'm done. Like, it's good. It's interesting. Like, I like my career, but I don't need my art related stuff to then also go back to computers. Like, no, no, thank you. Um, <laughs> so I think I could have a much more successful channel if I did that, because clearly the video tutorials I do that are like kind of tech and art related do very well on my channel. And those are all the searchable ones. So. Yes, be, being sure that's that I hear that. that. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead, Jen. Go, you I, can go. I agree. That's why I end up doing that as well. Is like I take the tutorials, and it's just what I I really enjoy doing them. So well, see, then it works. But be, yeah, and because it's searchable, like that's I, just like what Allison and Elizabeth are saying. Like I do that research beforehand, and I approach it from a mark because my background's in marketing. So like. I approach it with a marketing lens. So it's like, okay, what can I do to research this content, this subject? Okay, I can take that. I know how to use this kind of software. So what can I build off of that? And I um, like, so for example, like Affinity, they launched their version two this past December. And it made sense for me to plan out tutorials because that's what my skill set is in. But I also know people want to learn. How do you use Affinity Photo 2 on your iPad? How do you use Affinity Designer on your iPad? So it makes sense to kind of take that stuff and then build. It's like I almost make mini courses for YouTube. Um, and then that supports like what I'm doing with my actual classes. Mm -hmm. Alison, go ahead before. I was going to share some other um, things that I think might add to what you guys were already saying. But before I do that, I know you wanted to say something. So go ahead. Oh, I... I, I was just going to say that if you're just starting out on YouTube, um, the way people find you is by searching, like searching <laughs> um, YouTube search, like wanting to get help on something. They're not going to search for your vlogs. You know what I mean? So it, it's always good to just start with like, like super simple videos that help people within your niche. So. Yeah. Agreed. I also do like a competitor search too. I think that's really important um, relating to some of the keyword ideas. And I feel like this helps guide the content that I think will play nice with the algorithm. Like I, by no means I'm like, do I know exactly how the algorithm works? But I know it kind of plays nice with these kind of titles, these ideas based on what other people are already doing in our industry. Um, but when I look at my approach, I look at it as like, how can I create not just the best content, but the best looking content, high quality video, high quality lighting, high quality audio. So um, once I kind of figure the content out, I plan myself for about like six months, six months to a year in advance. I have video ideas when I want to share them on my um, channel. I'll decide on that focus. I'll write a treatment and a script. I outline what I want to talk about and then I create a shot list so that it's visually appealing, not just the information, but the way it looks. Um, and then I keep in mind things like background lighting, um, making sure that my space that I'm working in is clean or interesting looking. Um, and then I actually look at it from a production perspective too. I break it up into two production days so that my videos end up being like the strongest looking and the strongest information that I can have them. So like I have one day for filming, talking heads B-roll, and then I'll have another day to prep any like video graphics because that's my background, it's graphic design, marketing. So I like to create really professional visuals that support what I'm talking about in the video. And then things like thumbnails, what, what can I do to make them eye-catching? Then I go into the stuff like what um, Elizabeth and Allison were saying with like the titles, my tags. That's the big thing too. It's like, I know you had said something, Harmony, along the lines of like, or Cora, along the lines of, my my titles tend to be run-on sentences what i actually find is when i put those run-on sentences in my tags it's actually really helpful because people are searching those ideas in like the youtube search for like how do i create a surface pattern design using affinity designer and create a half drop or something like that wow. i use those in my tags for long tail like search huh. keywords and mm -hmm. it pulls up my content and and I get a lot of like when I'm smart about how I tag my stuff, I'll see it comes up in search and I'll see I'll get more views on those videos. That's so interesting. You know, I, I just want to pop in and say, I love how like planned yours is not just the timeline, Ooh. but the different days and everything. But at the same time, if you can't swing that, 
it can still work without it. Because like for me, the I invested yes. in yes. I, like I started with just my iPhone and like a ring light, right? And not no mic, nothing. And then I invested in like a fancy camera and a nice setup and you know, tried to learn editing. And you know what? My best ones are the one with a bad setup. So it's like if you could hear <laughs> and it's like clear enough, it's like with this live stream, like this is, you know, unless everyone's got everything set up, it's not gonna be an HD, like it's not super interesting. And yet, if it's the content that people are looking for, it's like interesting, engaging, it's good enough. So I would love to do what you're doing. It would make me so like proud. And like, again, as like visual people. It's right? taken like, a long time to get there. It's yeah. taken a long time to get there. You know what? I would, I just never post anything because I know that yeah. about myself. That's like, what, like, that's where I'm at too. You know, I'm like, yes, I can do this. But then you get one video a year. And again, to build a business <laughs> off, like that's not going to work for me. So you know what? You get like hopefully good content. It's just like <laughs> not perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's well, where that's I'm too, at too. It's like the kids, the kids make like, that's what really, I have to really work around my kids. So that's why I have to be like, I'm a very type A personality. So I have to plan around like my kids schedule when I know it's going to be quiet. So it's like, I can plan ahead and it just makes it easier for me and I have things set up and I don't have to worry about it. So, but like what you're saying, and I, I kind of said this, like I was taking notes earlier, like you don't have to do that. If you just have an iPhone and a window, like, do it just start like just start your channel don't wait like this stuff I've like developed and grown over the years because of the work that I do yeah. like when I was working photo shoots like I own a camera I own this equipment these are things that I learned and trained so it makes sense that I like built up from that but yeah, you don't exactly. have to do that you don't need yeah. it yeah I totally agree with that I I always tell people all you all you need is just your phone and like natural lighting to start you just need to start and, and start simple and eat at, like every video that you make you learn from it even if it doesn't like get any views it's still really important that video is still super important because you learn from it so just start that's the most important thing start with your phone and a window <laughs> and also I always say that your word your first videos will be your worst videos they will be terrible and just know that and expect it and be okay with it and put them, put them out anyways. Um, mm -hmm. they, like they won't be perfect. So yeah, it's like you have to learn as you go, you know, it's, it's just yeah. the way it's going to work. And as you get feedback and see what's, you know, people actually enjoy watching that can help you as well. Um, I'm going to jump in here quickly and just have a question for the audience as well that'll help us later. Um, you can either yeah, give us exact questions that you want us to answer or answer this one yourself um, if you're watching us today. And that's what do you struggle with the most when it comes to growing or starting your YouTube channel? I'm going to grab one more question here. And I think it's um, going to just work uh, kind of, I'm going to play off of what we were just talking about. So I have a few photos here from you. You can uh, talk through them. What kind of setup do you use? Let's you know share your camera, mic, software, et cetera, what you use. So I'm going to pull up a few photos that I received here. Let's start with you, Jen. All right, I'm going to preface this by saying, remember, I've been doing this for a very long time and not necessarily YouTube itself, but I worked in the fashion industry. I did a lot of work with production for photo shoots and magazines. So this kind of equipment was stuff that I kind of gained over the period of like 15 years. Um, so I have two cameras, my older uh, Canon 70D, which is my camera of choice when I do like filming a sit down video and talking head. Um, and then, um, then I put that on a, like a Manfrotto tripod and then I use a Canon G7X, um, if I'm filming on the go, which is like a smaller point and shoot, um, a secret and a tip because I am a person who could either run on and keep talking or forget my script. So I use a teleprompter, um, mm -hmm. mostly for when I'm doing videos. Yes. Um, and when I'm doing like more in-depth tutorials that re like require talking heads. But I usually use that with my courses and then sometimes with my YouTube videos, but not always. But the teleprompter is a game changer and it makes it so much easier. Um, I have a ring light that I use. It's just, I, I shared it in the, um, the, the comments. It's just like a newer ring light. It was relatively inexpensive. I think it was under a hundred bucks on Amazon. Um, for my mic, I use a Zoom H1 
portable recorder as my mic, but I also have a simple lab mic if I'm moving around. And then I add it on a MacBook Pro with Final Cut uh, Pro X. Final Cut was kind of expensive to buy in the beginning, but over time it kind of like paid itself off with like my course income and things like that and that's what I use for everything um and like I said I don't think you need all of this to get started I like I've invested in my channel because of the work that I do aside from YouTube and this is just like what I've built up over the last 15 years of creative work and I think you can just get started with your phone and inexpensive mic even like the you know your airpod or earpod like the wired one with a mic um, your earbuds, that's a great option too for a mic. Um, and it's just, don't let that kind of stuff stop you from doing this. Just, you know, if you want to invest in the future, do that, but it's easy to get started without any of the bells and whistles. Mm -hmm. I also think it's so easy to overinvest. Like it, maybe it's a personality type thing, but I did that for many years where it's like, this is my new hobby or my new goal, whether it's art business or something else, it's like pouring in hundreds or thousands, you know, and then you're like, I don't really like doing this. I mean, so it's like, try it out before you go all in. You can always upgrade. It only means your videos will get better. Um, but yeah, this sounds amazing. And like you have tons of options and it's super professional, but uh, probably overkill for your first video. <laughs> all righty, I'm going to bring up um, Elizabeth set up, sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. All right, mine is going to be an extreme contrast <laughs> because even though I've been consistently YouTubing since 2020 and had done videos before that, um, I'm still real lo-fi uh, because, yeah, like I said, I still like have a hard time. Like, even though, yeah, I do at least two videos a month, um, which is not, again, if you want to be like really serious, I feel like one every week is probably like ideal at least. Um, but I do two a month. It's kind of what I can swing. I'm definitely on the done is better than perfect tip. Um, so what you're seeing here is uh, basically, yeah, I have the same, probably very similar or the same uh, ring light, which is the newer ring light um, from Amazon. I have a blue Yeti microphone, which is a pretty good microphone. And then um, my laptop usually serves as like my notes um, or like my teleprompter and not shown because I'm using it to take the picture is I just use my Pixel 6 camera uh, as my like video camera still. I'm still using my phone as my camera. Um, the idea of like learning the ins and outs of like a good camera is still scary to me. So um, and then the one kind of thing that I've done somewhat recently is this cubicle wall that you're kind of seeing. It's the front of my, I have like a very long uh, office that's, it's, it's basically the sunroom of my house. So it's all windows and which is wonderful for light and, and uh, for like artwork, but for video, I mean, yes, the light is good for videos, but the like echo and also having any like background to like put up nice, like, uh, you know, like background art and all that kind of stuff just doesn't exist. So uh, for a long time, I was filming at a desk that's on the other side of my office. Um, but it was like, sometimes my office was super messy and then I have to clean that first. And I just wouldn't, was not making enough time. So I put up this little cubicle wall. And so now I always have this little um, area where I can just immediately sit down and start recording um, and so it makes it again, sort of the done is better than perfect, uh, thing that I really have to subscribe to in order to get these videos out, um, has been really wonderful. And as far as like editing and things like that, editing, I have played around with like a lot of different things. All of them are, yeah, just sort of like the easiest option, basically. Like, you know, I, for a long time, um, on, I have a, a PC and then I have a Mac laptop like a pc desktop and a mac laptop so on my pc i've used movavi which is just like an online like screen recorder because i was doing like slides more i started because i started in 2020 and because my kids were home uh i was doing like voiceovers at night because the light was too dark basically so i would do like slides and voiceovers that's how i started some of my like uh, educational videos. I couldn't really do camera face to camera because it was nighttime and then it was going to be like a ring light. And then, yeah, because I had to wait till my kids went to sleep and all that stuff. So I was doing like screen share software basically. 
And then now, thankfully, my kids are in school and um, I do have a little more time during the day. But um, I was using iMovie and lately I've been using Veed, which is like an online editor thing. I haven't found like the perfect editor. I want something sort of easy and that I can add fun extras into. Like Jen says, she puts all the graphics and the B-roll and does all this stuff, which is like amazing. I don't have that uh, going. So like the good thing about some of the online the newer online editing software is like, you know, you can kind of just pull random clips from different things or like GIF stickers and things like that. So I'm like slowly experimenting with that without trying to like overwhelm things and make it too cheesy. Um, so that that's the kind of stuff I'm working with. So it, if anyone's thinking like, you know, they need a huge setup, just know that um, I've been doing it for three years and I'm not saying I'm amazing at it, but I do it real low key. <laughs> So it is possible. I think that's such good feedback because it's like, again, I think you have to take your goal. And if it is to have a YouTube channel and get it monetized and then like work around your life, you know, if you know it's nighttime, you know, then, OK, find a solution that's going to work with that. If you have a ton of background, you already know how to vid it, you know how to vid it edit, <laughs> edit a video <laughs> and you know how to market you like you do all those things. Great obviously incorporate all your knowledge but if you're trying to learn everything at once like you're never going to get anywhere so i think it's very cool that you know different approaches can work um allison i know i don't have a video of your setup but did you want to add anything otherwise we can move on to the next question i saw you put lots of comments in the chat as well <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll be quick so um i for my camera i have a canon m50 so this is what I use in my microphone is a Rode Video Micro. It's really uh, affordable. Um, and my lens here is a 15 to 45 millimeter lens. And before I had that camera, I used my uh, D, my Nikon D600 uh, DSLR camera. Um, but this is a lot easier to use for me. Um, it has a flip screen. It's really easy to vlog with. Too. Um, and my lighting. So I have, I didn't send a picture. I'm sorry, but I have like these light panels up here. Wow. <laughs> what if that they're, from, <laughs> they're, they're from newer N E E W E R. I think that's what you guys were talking about. Mm -hmm. the, I like to use. Um, and let's see. Oh, I have a, um, a five terabyte external hard drive uh, that I um, use just for YouTube. I think that once you start making videos consistently, you, you really need to have an external hard drive just for YouTube to back that up. Um, and um, um, <laughs> for, for voiceovers, I have a blue snowball mic um, and I use Canva for my thumbnails. And for video editing, I actually have an assistant. She edits my videos for me, and she uses Adobe Premiere. Um, but if I do any editing, I have DaVinci Resolve, which is free. So that's a great free option. Um, and I think I think that's oh, Epidemic Sound for for music. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a good list. And all of you on the panel, feel free after the live stream is over, you'll have kind of the permanent chat at the bottom. Feel free to add any affiliate links to the things that you use that you recommend. Just make sure to uh, put in a quick note that it is an affiliate link because I'm based in Germany. So that's legally required uh, for that to be disclosed on my channel. All righty, let's uh, move on to another uh, juicy little question I have for you, and then we can get to some audience questions after that. Okay, so I'm sure everyone is wondering, are you monetized on YouTube through AdSense? I'll explain that in a second, what that even is. And if yes, how long did it take you to reach that milestone? So if you don't have a YouTube channel yet, you might not exactly know what this means, but uh, one of the goals for a lot of people that open a YouTube channel and want that as part of an income stream is that eventually YouTube gives you a part of the pie from the advertising that's running on the channel. So whether you're monetized or not, advertising is being shown to your viewers. You don't really get to opt out of that anyway. But um, once you hit its 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 watch hours within the last year, so not over your life, 
lifetime, then you become eligible. You still have to apply. Um, luckily, I got approved. I don't know what that looks like. I think it's like if somehow, you know, you're just reposting like a bunch of copyrighted work or like it's not original, then I think you would get denied. But um, otherwise, if it's your own channel and you're really doing original content, I think that would work well. So that is what it means to be monetized on YouTube. And I'd love to talk about like how long did it take you to get there? How many videos, timeline? And then what are you making off of YouTube at this time? Um, who wants to go first? Um, I can jump in. I, uh, I, like I said, I had some random videos, like from whatever, 2016, 2017, here and there, like Periscope and like various advertising. But I really started consistently in June of 2020. And I think when I first started, it was between two and four videos a month. So I, I think I was starting with somewhat weekly, maybe like not every week. Um, and then I ended up cutting back because time, but, <laughs> but, um, so between two and four videos a month, um, I did from June, 2020, I wasn't monetized. Um, and I first got monetized in March of 2021. So that's about nine months oh, of being yeah. like really consistent. Um, and so that wasn't, you know, like my, I honestly, again, I keep saying like, I'm, I don't feel like a YouTuber and I definitely didn't back then a little bit more now that I bought a cubicle wall, but, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it's not, um, you know, it, it wasn't necessarily my main goal. It was just like a platform to, to say mm -hmm. the things that I'm saying, you know, to get out information and also sort of lead people to my courses, hopefully. Um, but it, it is, uh, you know, good to, because people are, as you say, people are going to be watching the advertising anyway, so might as well get some of that. And um, it's, I don't make a lot. I think I, I make approximate, like it's been going up and down lately, but um, uh, I feel like last year I made like $1,200. So like a hundred dollars a month, basically. Um, and this year, some months it's been more like 150 a month. Um, but then it's lately it's been dipping. So, um, it's, it's not a ton, ton of money for me at this point, but I'll take it. So <laughs> thank you so much for sharing. Um, I am going to go next if that's okay. Um, and I'm going to share like a little bit of my, um, stats as well. So, okay. So um, again, I want to share like a realistic view because we all have aspirations. But so I started my first video was like July 2020. And then like I kind of did a few you can see, but then there'd be these huge gaps in between, like where it was just like months and months where I was like, you know, whatever, I was sick or I was pregnant and wasn't feeling well, or I just like it wasn't worth it because it was going nowhere and you're doing, you're investing like a week of your, you know, every night or something and then you get 20 views. And so uh, there was definitely a lot of inconsistency um, on my part, which I think helped uh, make this take so long for my channel. But eventually um, I figured out like a format and, you know, you can see towards the right, like um, how much more consistent I was getting. Um, the crazy spikes in views are shorts, which to me are kind of worthless. Like for me, it hasn't been something that translates into like a long-term viewer, someone that's really like loyal and interested. So this looks like, oh, I was getting these crazy views. No, I tried a few shorts and I decided I was getting a bunch of followers from countries that usually don't follow me. And like, it just like, it does, it didn't seem worth it. So I stopped again, but that's what these crazy spikes are. So it took me until April, 2023. So almost three years to get monetized. Um, that was so 33 months, 43 videos. Again, not that much actually in comparison. So probably if I'd done hundred, I would have, you know, gotten there a lot faster and 10 live streams. Um, and then what you see here is like, that's when I started getting monetized there at the end. Um, again, all of this, like, that's what I want you to take away though from this. Like, it's amazing. And I think the potential is almost limitless as far as how much you can eventually make, especially if you make this like evergreen searchable kind of content and you're just building and building your channel. Um, but um, look at all these, like literally years where you're kind of working a part-time job for free, trying to make this you know, channel come to life. Um, 
So eventually I got monetized in April of this year and I make between 16 and 20 bucks a month, a month. So it's not um, life changing at this point. I think when I have this like fantasy that like, oh, once I get monetized, it's going to be only a hundred bucks a month. And I thought that was like a little, but I'd be really happy with it. Well, it's, it ain't 100 bucks a month <laughs> yet, uh, but that's okay. I'm going to keep going. But yeah, I just wanted to share this perspective of like, I was so excited. I, I worked so hard. I was refreshing all the time to like, oh, is it now? Is it, did I, did I make it? Did I make it? And then it's like, yeah. here, you, you know, two cents on this video this month. It's like, oh, <laughs> this, this, is not, this is not what I was expecting. But again, I'm totally into YouTube because I think, as far as a platform that actually allows content creators or artists like to get something back um, and the longevity of it, the searchability of it, the community, like I, I love YouTube. So I'm gonna keep going, but um, just as far as this being a sustainable thing for my business, if I break this down into hourly you know, cost right now, this would not be a wise investment of my time, but I think long-term it will be. So that's why I keep going. Um, Allison, can we look at your stats in comparison? Because they're quite different. <laughs> and I love it because we got to see, we got to see the whole range here. <laughs> That's great. Well, um, so I, again, as a refresher, I started my channel in February 2017. Fe February 2018. Yeah, February 2018, I think sorry. Um, and so it took me two years to get monetized. Um, so I got monetized in March of 2020. And as of today, I make about like, I would say on average $500 a month from YouTube ad revenue. Um, yeah. So what else did I want to say? Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm looking at my notes. <laughs> Know, please go ahead. Yeah, I it, it took me two years to get monetized. My my channel it grew really slowly for me. Um, but you have a lot of videos too, right? Like yeah, I I um, I was very consistent. Yeah. yeah, wow. Like today, wow. I have like over four hundred videos. Um, but yeah, I I was very consistent with uploading once a week. Um, I did that mm -hmm. for years, even though I didn't see like hardly any views, even though I made nothing for the first two years, I just kept on going. And I think that's really important. And now I'm, I'm like reaping my reward, like reaping the rewards from all of that work, right. even though like $500 a month isn't like super, like it's not a full-time job, obviously, but it it's, you know, I'm very blessed. And I'm very grateful for that um, income stream. And um, I'm very glad that I put in all of that work I did for years, even though I like didn't really see anything from that work. Um, mm -hmm. So for those of you who are like, oh, I, I don't get any views, I don't make any money, just keep on going. If, if YouTube is really what you wanna do, if it's a, an income stream that, that you really wanna have for your art business, um, just keep on going because you will eventually um, reap those rewards. And it's just a really great way to make money 24 seven. Um, and especially if like, I don't know, like content on YouTube is evergreen. Like, it's not like Instagram reels where you post it and you get views for maybe a day or two. And then that's it. For most people is how it is. But YouTube, you continually get views um, from your from your content. Like today, I I, I think we might go over this, but my most popular video was from like, I uploaded it like two and a half years ago. And mm -hmm. to this day, I still make money from it. Um, it yeah, you just have to be consistent um, and just keep on going, even though you're like, why am I doing this? <laughs> just have to keep going. Yeah, I think that's really great advice. And it's a, a great example, right? So we're, you know, we're talking about 20 bucks a month, 100 bucks a month, 500 bucks a month. But I don't even think that's the top limit. Like that really impresses me. And like, wow, I would, I would be so, so happy with that. Of course, it's not, I mean, depending on where you live. But for my life, that's, that's still nowhere close to, you know, making like a full time or even a part time income. But still, it is something that 
is an additional income stream. You heard all the artists at the beginning, right? You don't have just one thing. Sure, if you have maybe, you know, 400,000 subscribers, a million subscribers, whatever, you know, maybe eventually you can live off of YouTube. But I think for a lot of people, it's like one more thing to add to your portfolio of um, income that can eventually make an art career sustainable. Um, and, you know, even, even when there is no money coming in yet, I think, what was mentioned before, like the searchability of it, the fact that you are being seen by people who might otherwise never find you, the connections you're making, the way that you can build a community and you can also direct people towards other offerings you have. And we'll talk about that um, in a second as well, Jen. Like, I think it's, you know, it's not just like cent for cent, was this worth the investment of my time? Um, but I think it's so cool that YouTube does share the ad revenue with you because again, like what other platforms actually do that um, and do that consistently? Because I think some others had like temporary things like a real bonus or this and this, and then it gets taken away, you know? But YouTube has been like super consistent and your content has such longevity that's like unparalleled in other platforms. Thank you for sharing, Allison. I'm I'm really impressed. But again, like in comparison, if you if you have a takeaway, okay, I took three years and I took months off where you know I was you know whatever for whatever reason I stopped. Um, you know, Allison's there every single week. You know, 400 videos. I have what did I say 70 or something. So it's like you can see how. I think YouTube rewards the consistency and, and just you're getting better, your skills are improving. There's a million reasons why someone with a channel that size would also have a much bigger following um, and much more income coming in. But I do like that it does feel like, like that's what I always thought is like, just keep going, just keep going. Like eventually YouTube will actually reward this, you know? And people will actually find your channel and will actually like it, just keep going. But it's it's, pretty hard I have to say sometimes it feels difficult to keep going when you just can't get to that point um Jen do you want to share a bit as well we have another question sure. if you're not yet monetized how is this helping your business yes yeah, so out of everyone I am not monetized yet um I'm cool. just shy a few hundred yeah. watch hours um and what I think is it's because I made a transition for my video. So it took longer for my, like the algorithm to kind of figure out like, what the heck is this lady doing with this channel? And it's right. been the last three years where I've been consistent too. I was posting weekly videos and then I was pregnant all of last year or not last year, the, the summer before and I have a 10 month old now. So I, I didn't completely stop posting. I took like a two month break and then I had stuff pre-filmed and I started like releasing mm -hmm. it again. Um, and now I'm on a like two video a month, schedule. So I have a feeling that's why it's taking longer to get those final botch hours. Um, but like what you're saying, it's, it's, it's like, why am I doing this if I'm not getting paid for me? My, my courses are my top earner. Um, that's also why I invest in all this stuff, because my classes are what I use a lot of this for too. Mm -hmm. So while I'm not monetized on YouTube, I still invest time in it as a revenue stream for things like affiliate links. Um, and then most importantly, promotional tools, like it's a promotional tool for my paid courses, which are the larger source of my income. Um, mm -hmm. It's really helpful for people to search and find a tutorial about affinity designer or doing surface pattern design or doing graphic design in this kind of software or on your iPad or something like that. And then I can link in the description box or add tags that will link out to my classes. Like, hey, if you like this kind of content, here's my free stuff for you because I know it's helpful and accessible. But I do have these other classes if you want to learn more. And that's why I think it's important for me to continue. I would love to make money off of YouTube as a, you know, additional side hustle revenue stream. Um, I'm not there yet, but I keep investing in it because I see the future for it. And then B, because I see the opportunity for me to use utilize their search engine to get people to my paid classes, my paid content. Um, and it's also for me, it's really important to share accessible content um, that relates to my knowledge and skills. And maybe someone can afford a class of mine, um, but they still want to learn something. So YouTube is the best way for me to offer that content. 
Yeah, I agree with all of that, Jen. I definitely, like I said, since I don't really think about, like the the goal of being monetized or making a big income from YouTube, that sounds awesome. But like, yeah, if I actually look at like how many hours invested versus like the payout, it's like, no, that's not working. But so many people who come to my classes, you know, say they found me on YouTube and that's how my list continues to grow, my newsletter list. And, and the accessibility of when people, you know, can't, I, you know, I offer scholarships and things like that to my courses, but obviously can't let everyone in <laughs> if they can't afford it. But, you know, I do have so many resources, so much content on YouTube and in, on my blog that I feel like, you know, I don't, you know, it's, it's there for you. It, it takes a little bit longer to dig through it all, but most, a, a lot of the information is out there for you. So um, thinking about it in that way of having, this is my platform to, to show you what I can do and what I know. And, and if you really want to dig deep, take my courses, then that, that just makes it all worth it, whether, whether I'm getting, you know, AdSense or not. So totally makes sense. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, so like, because of YouTube, because of all of my subscribers and views that I've gotten, um, I'm able to sell my online classes. So I, I offer like a few free classes that people can sign up for. Um, and then they get on my email list. And then it's through my email list that I um, like actually sell my online classes. And it's all on autopilot, it's already set up. And because of YouTube, um, I'm able to, to like sell my classes without like doing much because I have set it up already. Um, and YouTube is just great that way. I just love YouTube. And um, I feel like I was going to say something else. <laughs> I forget. It's okay. Maybe I'll come back to you. YouTube is a great way to sell your online classes and build your email list. Um, YouTube allowed me to grow my email list over 7,000 people. Wow. Um, yeah. And I, I'm just so, so grateful for that. So yeah, you put in all this work on YouTube. Um, and yeah, you're, you're like, okay, what for, but just keep on going because you not only might get ad revenue in the future, but you can build your email list and, and sell any classes that you want to make to them. And it is just, it blesses, YouTube blesses you in so many ways, not just ad revenue. That's amazing. I love that view. Yeah. Again, it's a, it's about a much bigger picture. Um, I'm going to throw in one uh, quick audience question here. Um, it's not exactly a question, but um, do you all have any tips for creating a schedule for videos, frequency, topics, all that kind of stuff? We only have about 15 more minutes. So let's take maybe about five to answer this question. Um, I, like I said, at this point, I try to do two, sometimes three a month. Um, and I work with a person who takes my videos and puts them into blog posts. So I have a contractor, like a content person, and she helps, you know, make my blog post very, you know, SEO friendly and all that good stuff. Um, so she takes like my scripts and, and my, my video content. And so first of all, that's awesome. Recommend if you can afford it, <laughs> highly recommend. Um, but also, um, we quarterly we discuss like potential topics right so we meet once a quarter and we just say like okay for the next three months what are we gonna be talking about and for a while it was like i was doing one interview and one like educational video a month so that made it really uh easier because it's really only three educational videos a quarter um and then the interviews are i mean i have to think of like questions and obviously have to reach out to people but mostly it's just yeah talk to someone and, and post like it is a little bit easier. Um, but I've been doing less interviews lately, kind of stalling out on reaching out to people and things like that. So I have been doing a little bit more um, actual, uh, you know, educational videos. Um, but but basically, once we figure out what like three to five topics I'm going to address over the next quarter, then I schedule everything out in Asana. Um, I love Asana for keeping track of all my projects. So um, that's when I, it's like, OK, like I'm going to write the scripts. I'm going to figure out all the you know what I what that if I need graphics, 
will um, like if I need graphics within the video, obviously the thumbnails and the titles and all the things that we've already kind of discussed. But um, basically, thinking of those those topics um, and and writing the scripts are like the the major like upfront scheduling stuff that I that I try to figure out. I use uh, Notion um, to plan. I'm gonna kind of show you guys really quickly. Um, that's my my Notion plan. I uh, plan out a year in advance, like I said earlier, um, and uh, I transition from doing like weekly to two videos a month. Um, and obviously things change, so I, I adjust as I go. But I find it's helpful for me to kind of figure out well, this is going to be a filming day, this is going to be an editing day. I'm gonna have it live at this point. Um, and Notion is such a great way for me to keep track of it, and I can uh, like uh, align everything to like my Google Calendar. Um, so I'm very big on scheduling. Again, I have kids, so I have to schedule around them and everything. So it just makes more sense for me to do that. But Notion is my go-to. I do about two videos a month now. Um, and similar to like what Elizabeth was saying, I do like a tutorial of some sort and then some other kind of content um, to kind of help spread things out. And if I'm able to, maybe I'll throw in a short there because they keep telling us shorts are supposed to help us. So I try to I try. <laughs> Um, I, I use Trello to, to like plan out my videos. So here's, we all have tools, just different ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're all the okay. same type of thing, right? Planning apps. <laughs> um, so right now I have videos planned out until next April and I plan on doing just two videos a month. Um, and I, I plan on filming them all in the next like two months cause I'm going to have a baby. So, um, so yeah, and uh, I also um, use Google Docs. I, I have a Google Doc where I I have, um, you know, this is going to be the YouTube title. This, these are the tags I'm going to use. And this is the description I'm going to put in, in the video description. So cool. yeah, definitely do that as well. My tip is maybe a little less concrete. So for me, what I needed to figure out was the frequency. So like, yeah, I would love to do three a week, uh, one a week, like whatever, right? So because I know, again, consistency matters and like showing up frequently, all these things are very, very, very helpful um, to grow your YouTube channel. But um, I had to also look at realistically, what can I do? And when I was trying like with goals that were too big, then again, I would do maybe like three and then just like disappear for months kind of thing. So I know I have now established for my life, um, the stretch, the stretch goal is I was like two interviews a month. And then sure, if I can do like another video, a studio vlog, a tutorial, I can throw that in, but I don't really focus on those right now. Um, but with the interviews, I have like a set schedule within my month. I use Notion too, where I know which days I need to be working on the thumbnails, which days do I need to send out the questions? Like, so it's, it's become much more repeatable. Like it was a lot of work to figure out what's going to work for my life and my schedule. Um, again, like, you know, working around work and daycare and, you know, nap time and all these things and knowing yeah. I can do this amount of work and that's it. And I have yeah. to be prepared and optimize it. Um, and I can do those too. So that's really helpful. Now I have my system and I have my templates and it's just like, okay, change the questions, change the names, change photos. And then, yeah. you know, it's there. So I think kind of figuring out like, what can you do to reduce some of the work too? Um, is something that you might want to consider. But then also only stretch yourself as far as you can because there's no point like burning out or going really hard and then like never posting a video again. So for me, it's it's twice a month. That's what I can do. Yeah. Systemizing is is so important, but it does take a while to figure out the system. It's hard up front, but then it makes it so much easier down the line. Love that. All right. I would bring up one more audience question, but before we do that, because we just have a few more minutes, I want to ask the panel, is there anything we didn't touch on today that you really wanted to share? Any point you wanted to make? Any resource? Anything like that? These are your last few minutes. Advice, I think, would be helpful if we can yeah. share. My, my number one tip of advice is if you're thinking about starting a channel, to just do it and know your why. Because we've been talking about like, you know, how hard it is. I think we get like caught up in crippling anxiety about pursuing something that we're really like passionate about, but we don't feel like we're ready to do it. 
Um, so even if you don't feel 100% ready, I think it's important to just do it because you can learn along the way. And I think what Elizabeth is saying and Allison and Harmony and myself really showcases that you can learn as you go. And even if you mess up, there's other opportunities. And my second part really quick is know your why. I think that's really vital. It's more, even more important when you are a professional doing something essentially for free, like we've been talking about creating content on YouTube. It's not easy. It's not a get rich quick opportunity. You have to look at it from the perspective of like a marathon um, and not a sprint because it takes a lot of energy and time. So if you know why you're doing this and what's your passion behind it, why is the channel beneficial to you? Why are you sharing the content? You want to help others. If you know that why, revisit it often as you're pers like pursuing the journey because it'll be helpful in keeping you moving forward. Love that advice, Jen. Yes. Yes. Um, I, I guess for me, be okay with trying lots of things with YouTube. When you're just mm -hmm. starting out, don't don't make yourself like choose your niche already experiment uh experiment with different kinds of topics um you don't want to put yourself in a box so the worst thing you can do is you you're just starting out and you make one type of video every single week and it's just not working out well it's it's because you're just doing one type of video you you need to like um try new things Mm -hmm. Try new video topics. So, for example, watercolor. Let's say you want to do a watercolor channel, um, and and that's what you think you want to start out with. But that's great. Do some watercolor videos, but maybe try different kinds of other topics like drawing or color pencils or acrylics or whatever. Um, and and then after a while, after you make videos and and you start to learn like what you enjoy and and what actually gets traction on YouTube as well, like like um, finding out what you enjoy, but also what gets views. That's like key, you know. Um, then you, you can hone in on your niche. You don't have to choose one right away. I think that is um, probably one of my best advice. And to just do it, just just start. And just know that it's going to be terrible at first. <laughs> you know, I talked like, to another artist. I talked to another artist <laughs> recently, and I thought they had such an interesting perspective. Actually, two different artists. And one was saying, like, I am going to try 400 videos at least. Like, I'm not going to consider it a failure until I have 100 videos up on my channel. And the second that. one was like, I don't consider a video even a failure until a year after it's been published. Because I don't know if you've experienced this, but sometimes it's like, for me, it's a total dud. And then like seven months in, all of a sudden it's like, what? Like this video is taking off, like, you know, for, for my standard. So that's the thing. I mean, unless you're really like embarrassed of a video or it's like something that shouldn't be public or, you know, then maybe take it down. But in general, leave stuff up, even if it kind of failed, because sometimes it's just a matter of time. I love that. Oh, one other advice I, I want to touch on real quick is to start simple. Start with very simple videos, answering simple questions like in your niche, um, make your videos short. They don't have to be super long or super crazy, fancy. Just answer something very simple and to the point, quick, two minute video, three minute video, you know, like uh, what is the best watercolor brush, you know, <laughs> or something like that. Um, yeah, I think, I think just starting very simple and easy videos so that you can learn, um, at the same time and figure things out. I think that that's really important. And I I also um, have a YouTube for artists workshop on my Teachable. So if you do wanna go more in depth with YouTube specifically for artists, you can go to my Teachable, which is allisonlionart.teachable.com, so. Thank you for sharing that. That's a really great resource <laughs> for anyone who's like excited now and, and wants to get going. Very I love cool. that. All righty. Um, we have two minutes left uh, and then we are at our max one and a half hour mark. So I'm going to throw in the very last question, Elizabeth, if you need to drop off, uh, that's totally fine too. Uh, but I think we can make it in two minutes. Um, so anyone, not everyone, <laughs> anyone have a suggestion <laughs> for lighting and makeup for putting your best face forward while, while vlogging? 
or making videos, I guess, in general. Um, well, I guess for me, when I vlog, I, I don't really worry about my makeup. <laughs> I, I try to just keep it real and I try to not let myself care too much because people just people don't care. And if they do, then what the heck, you know, <laughs> but, that's just me. Yeah, I, I think my evolution has also been that way. Like before, you know, I wanted to look like perfect. And now I'm like, ah, no, no makeup, whatever. Like, you know, we're feeling this. <laughs> like, again, just trying to make it work for your life. And now when I do have makeup on, which is a rare occasion, unfortunately, these days, because I feel better. Like, it's not for anyone else. I like wearing makeup and I feel more put together when I have it on. So what I do, not specifically for YouTube, because now I basically only do live streams. So it's like, well, then I have makeup on. But maybe afterwards, if I have a few minutes, I'll make sure to like capture some reels or do something else and like use the fact that I have a full face on <laughs> and capture a few other things. Totally. <laughs> awesome. All righty. Well, I think this has been a really, really cool session. Thank you so much for everything you've shared. Like I mentioned, feel free um, to put anything in the comments afterwards that you want to direct people to, your courses, um, the things you use, everything, because I think it's really helpful for people watching. Uh, sometimes conversation moves kind of fast. We don't have the names of items and things on screen. So it is helpful. That being said, we are going to go into the outro. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. I really enjoyed today's conversation and I hope you did too. I hope you walk away feeling like it was a good use of your time. And if that's the case, why don't you give this video a like and share it with one of your artist friends who you think would also benefit from seeing this, whether it's a little bit of encouragement or some information that they might be missing. I would really appreciate if you share the video. If you are really digging it too, there are 15 other episodes so far of this podcast. You can find them all over on my channel. They are focused on different art business topics. So have a look. I'm sure Sure you'll find something else that appeals to you. And when you're done with all of that, make sure to also pop by all the artists that participated today. I have the links below in the description and you see information here on the screen. I bet they would be so excited to hear from you and hear, hey, maybe it's the first time that you've heard of them and you can do a little introduction yourself or maybe you have admired them for a long time and you really wanna thank them for sharing all their information so openly today. Whatever it is, I bet they would love to see a comment on one of their videos or get a DM or maybe even get a subscribe from you because as you've heard, it's an incredible opportunity here on YouTube, but it is not always easy. So we appreciate the encouragement and I love the community that is building over here. All that being said, I hope to see you again here on the next live stream in two weeks.